Hello and welcome to The Epitome. I am your host, Nathan Bozeman, and today we're going to be discussing whether or not Christians should celebrate Halloween. Let's get into it. It's becoming quite the trend these days to say that Christians should not practice or celebrate Halloween. You've probably heard the popular myth on the internet that basically it is descended from an ancient Celtic tradition called Samhain, where they would dress up in these costumes and they would try to ward off evil spirits and they believe that the other world, the, the world of the dead and the living, the veil was a lot thinner on October 31st through November 1st. And then basically the Catholic Church put All Saints Day on this day to Christianize Samhain. And basically if we're practicing Halloween, we're just practicing this ancient pagan witchy cult thing holiday and we should not do it. We should stay away from it. But I actually started doing some digging and I was reading some historians on the topic and it painted a very different picture that I don't think a lot of people are telling. And so I figured today I would go through the actual history of Halloween and then we could have hopefully a rational conversation about whether or not Christians should practice it. If you're hoping for me to just tell you that basic story that I just kind of gave a quick synopsis of, that's not going to be this video. Hopefully what I'm going to do is give you a more accurate depiction of the history of Halloween, and then we can talk about it afterwards. All right, I've got my spooky slideshow ready. Should we celebrate Halloween with me, Nathan Bozeman? Let's get into it. These are the countries where it's celebrated. I've highlighted them all. You can see it's mostly Western and Christianized nations, except for China. That's like a non-Christianized nation, but it's mostly in Europe and then like a little bit in South America and then obviously like Canada, Mexico, and the United States. So lots of countries celebrate Halloween. And let's continue. So Samhain, let's get into it. You heard me talk a little bit about it earlier. If you've never heard about Samhain, I'm aware it's spelled like Samhain or something, but it's pronounced Samhain. I don't know why. It's just an ancient Celtic word. Um, many trace the history of Halloween to this ancient Celtic festival. And based on our earliest sources, Samhain was actually a harvest season where people would get together and they would celebrate the end of summer. And they would do this on October 31st through November 1st. And many also claim that people would dress up during this time to ward off evil spirits, to perform animal sacrifices, and they believe that the veil between the living and the dead was thinnest during this time. But let's continue. Did Samhain inspire Halloween? This is the big question. You know, I was talking about how they would dress up in costumes and they would try to ward off evil spirits. But I'm going to get into a couple of reasons why I do not believe that Samhain is the cause of Halloween, but we have to do a little bit of history first. Most of what we know about Samhain is recorded for us between the 9th and 12th century by Catholic monks who converted the Celtic regions to Christianity. Notice how late these sources are, from the 800s to the 1100s. All that we know about Samhain pretty much is recorded for us during this time period, which is long after Samhain had been practiced. And our earliest source telling us that Samhain has to do with anything to do with the supernatural is in the 12th century. Okay. And this is from Magna Martha Finn. If you want to check my sources here, this is the earliest source we have that says Samhain has anything to do with the supernatural, which is kind of why people say that Halloween is from Samhain because of the dressing up and all this stuff. But that's actually from a really late source. And our earliest source, the Sir Gigle Concullen, says that Samhain descends from a festival and they would just do nothing but feast, play sports, and celebrate together. They basically would just get together and celebrate the harvest season. They would eat, they would feast together, they would have a good time, they would just hang out as a community, and that was it. That's what Samhain was. So this is really important because our first source telling us that Samhain has anything to do with the supernatural is from the 12th century. But remember, Everything we know about Samhain is recorded for us from the 9th to 12th century. So for our first source in these 300 years to tell us that Samhain has anything to do with supernatural is at the end of this period, tells us that this might have been a later development. And All Saints Day was developed like in the 7th and 8th century, if I'm remembering off the top of my head correctly. So it seems to me that this later development of Samhain comes after All Saints Day exists. But let's continue. Let's talk about All Saints Day. Right now it's on November 1st. It wasn't always on November 1st, by the way, but we'll get to that later. It's otherwise known as All Hallows Day. 
and it's a day on the Catholic liturgical calendar where they celebrate all the saints, whether they are known or unknown, and they call the saints like the departed brethren, which is why I have this <laughs> this casket with a cross and the ghost going out of it. Um, but the day before All Saints Day is called All Hallows' Eve, which is where we get the name Halloween, right? So the, the name Halloween comes from the Catholic tradition. So the myth, once again, goes that basically the Catholics just Christianized Samhain, but let's talk about why I don't think this is right. In the Middle Ages, kids would go door to door, and it was a practice called hallowing, and they would sing songs and hymns, and they would get food in return. Sounds a little bit like trick-or-treating, or when people on Christmas go caroling. You know, it kind of sounds a little bit like that. All Saints Day in the Celtic regions was originally in the spring. This is important, because a lot of people want to say that Samhain is the cause of Halloween, right? So we need Samhain to be here, and then we need it to go into the All Saints Day. We need All Saints Day to be like a Christianization of Samhain. But that's not what we see in the historical record. What we actually see is that All Saints Day in the Celtic regions, which is where Samhain is celebrated, was in April. Okay, and Samhain was still being practiced at this time in on October 31st through November 1st. And it's actually the Germanic regions, which is Germany, that moved it to November 1st. So it's not even the Celtic regions that changed All Hallows' Eve and All Saints' Day to November. It was actually Germany that did this. And then the rest of Christendom, which is the rest of people who believe in Christianity, followed suit afterwards. I think this is a really problematic fact for the hypothesis that Samhain caused All Saints' Day to be on November 1st. Because we need All Saints Day to be trying to Christianize Samhain for that to be the case. But what it seems here is that in the Celtic regions, All Saints Day was practiced in April, and Samhain was still practiced on November 1st, and October 31st in the evening. And then in Germany, they moved All Saints Day to November 1st, and then Hallow's Eve is All Hallow's Eve is October 31st. And then the rest of Christendom follows suit. So then in the Celtic regions, this is where it can get a little bit complicated. All Saints Day moves to the same evening of Samhain, and they are still practicing both at the same time. The Celtic people, they didn't see a contradiction with Samhain and All Hallows Day or All Saints Day. And so because they didn't see a contradiction here, they just were practicing both alongside one another. And so rather than Samhain causing All Saints Day or like All Saints Day being a Christianization of Samhain, what the historical record seems to see is possibly All Saints Day was moved to the same day as Samhain and then possibly you could argue that in the Celtic regions, Samhain started to maybe make its way into the practices of Halloween. I think that is something that could be argued for historically. I don't think the mythological uh, version that I stated earlier that like you know, All Saints Day is a Christianization of Samhain. I don't think that is historically verifiable or defensible. But maybe the idea that Samhain later affected Halloween can be defended. All right, now let's talk about modern Halloween. Because honestly, modern Halloween practices are very disconnected from the ancient Samhain and All Saints Day practices that they descended from. Because basically in like the early 1900s, Halloween was largely disliked. People would use it as a day to just go out and vandalize or pull pranks. That's what a lot of teenagers did on Halloween in like the early 1900s. And there was even in an article I read, like there were these presidents that wanted to abolish Halloween. They wanted to like replace it with something else because it was just so annoying and cops had to be out on like Halloween and all this stuff. And so it was a largely disliked holiday. Like people weren't really practicing it in America the way we see it today. And so there was a long time period where Halloween wasn't even a big deal in America. But now we get to the year 1950. Some kids went door to door raising money for UNICEF and they were doing this to help those who had been affected by World War II. And this practice exploded. It blew up and by the 1960s, the practice had spread all around the United States, and it almost seemed like un-American to not open your door to trick-or-treaters to help those in need and to help donate to UNICEF. 
and I mean, basically the rest is history. It's like capitalism took over. Like people were going door to door, knocking on, knocking on people's doors, raising money for UNICEF and candy companies got involved and costume companies got involved and Hallmark got involved and all these different companies just started saying, Hey, well, if Halloween's going to be a family thing and people are going to get together and, you know, raise money, we might as well get in on this. And so a lot of the modern Halloween practices originated in like the 1950s from kids who were raising money for like war affected veterans. And so to say that it just directly descends from Samhain is just, I think historically ignorant personally, you might could argue that like some of the traditions like Halloween or trick or treating or whatever have some roots there. But again, all saints day is not just like some Christianization of Samhain that isn't a historically defensible position. We can't overlook Hollywood's influence as well because uh, Hollywood influences our perception of Halloween and it can't be overstated. We've all grown up in a world where Halloween is associated with horror movies, witchcraft, exorcisms, and all things demonic and evil. The first Halloween movie came out in 1978 and this began an entire genre of movies that most people tend to enjoy around this time of year because that's what they associate it with. Popular movies or TV shows at the time also play a large part in what people decide to wear as their costumes, whether the movie or show is new or old. Think about it. This year for Halloween, you're probably going to see a lot of people dressing up as Barbie or Doctor Strange or whatever because those were big movies this year. And so Hollywood actually has a big influence on Halloween and it has affected the way we view Halloween and see it as an evil holiday. It's because scary movies have kind of become almost like second nature. Like when you hear Halloween, you immediately think of horror movies and that's because of Hollywood. So finally we get to the question, should we celebrate Halloween? I think it's important to first acknowledge that many satanic people and many neo-pagan people along with witches and all of their like treat Halloween as a holy day. They do use it as a day of evil. Let's get that straight. A lot of the people in the satanic temple and witches and neo-pagans, they look at Halloween is a holy day because they actually do get their practices from paganism, by the way. Um, But this does not make the day in itself evil. Modern Halloween practices are largely separated from the historical context from which they came. Notice how we're not practicing All Saints Day the next day. You see, like Halloween originated from All Saints Day. Okay. And notice how most of us don't practice All Saints Day. Catholics still do. And that's great. And the Eastern Orthodox tradition still practice it, guess what, in April where it originally was. (laughs) So that's a fun fact as well. But All Saints Day is something that here in America and the Protestant world, we've kind of just lopped that part off. We just still celebrate Halloween. So it's, it's disconnected from where it came from. It has nothing to do with All Saints Day anymore. It's just its own like holiday, basically, because of what happened with that UNICEF uh, fundraiser. And then all of the companies getting involved in costumes and Hollywood and the rest is history. But just because other people use this day for evil does not mean that if you go with your kids to get candy in the neighborhood that you're performing witchcraft. And so this is something I want to say for everyone out there that's saying don't practice Halloween. Are we really going to say that like a family that like dresses up as Mario and Luigi and Princess Peach or whatever and goes and gets candy from their neighbors and the people in their neighborhood is really doing the same thing as like people sitting in a dark, lighting candles and doing some vigil and talking to a Ouija board and trying to communicate with the dead. Like, are we really going to try to say that those are the same thing? Because to me, that just removes all nuance from the conversation. It removes all nuance from the discussion and just says, well, it looks evil. So it's satanic. And To me, I don't think we can say without sounding silly that those two things are the same. I think they're obviously different. So, sure, if you want to go dress up as Mario, Luigi, and Peach and go get some candy, like, there's nothing inherently evil about that. However, for all those people out there that are using Halloween as a day to try to speak to the dead because they are (laughs) descendants of Samhain, well, then, yeah, I would say don't do that. And so my answer here is going to be use discernment. There are lots of ways to spend Halloween. I know pastors that use it for evangelism. They get tracks like gospel tracks and with their candy, they hand out gospel tracks or they'll walk around their neighborhood. And as they're getting given candy, 
they're giving their neighbors gospel tracts. And so you can use it as a way to evangelize and tell people about Jesus. You don't also have to go trick-or-treating. If, if that's something you have a problem with, you can go to fall festivals or fairs or corn mazes or pumpkin patches or bonfires or camping, give out candy. I know with my family, we like sit in the driveway and we have this little portable bonfire pit and we just make a bonfire. We have candy outside with us and we make s'mores in the bonfire. And as kids come up, we give them candy and we just have family time. And so it's like, you don't have to go trick or treating or you don't have to participate in all the nonsense to celebrate Halloween. You can spend it in all kinds of different ways. And so I want to end with this. I want to end with a few scriptures and just ideas to think about. Number one, if you are going to go trick-or-treating, I do think you should not dress up in evil costumes. Ladies don't dress up as like the the nurses and the seductive stuff. And, and guys don't dress up as Michael Myers or murderous people. Like, let's use discernment on that. that. Let's avoid all appearances and forms of evil, as 1 Thessalonians 5 tells us. Number two, keep your family covered in prayer. I do think this is important. You know, if you are going to go trick-or-treating, before you leave the house, just pray over your family. Just say, all right, Lord cover our family. I know there's a lot of people out there doing evil, but Lord, just protect us. Watch over us. You know, and we're going to have a good time. First Corinthians eight is another important passage because it is talking about food that is uh, sacrificed to idols. And so let's say there's one person in your neighborhood that's given out candy and they've like prayed a curse over it. You know, maybe you're superstitious about that. Let's read this here. Are verses eight and nine, but read verses one through nine. If you want Paul's full you know, synopsis of this. He says, food will not bring us close to God, nor are we the worse if we do not eat, nor the better if we do eat. But take care that this freedom of yours does not somehow become a stumbling block to the weak. In other words, he's saying, if you eat it, if you don't eat it, it doesn't matter because ultimately what you eat is not what corrupts you. And again, if let's go back to prayer. If you are worried that like someone's messing with your candy, pray over it. Like the Bible tells us in Colossians that the enemy is disarmed and disgraced. He has no power. And so just pray over your family, pray over the candy you eat. You're going to be fine. Do all that you do unto the glory of God and make some great memories with your family. So in conclusion, no, Halloween does not come from Samhain. All Saints Day was not a Christianization of Samhain. People in the Celtic regions were celebrating All Saints Day in April and then Germany moved it to November 1st, and then everyone else followed suit. Yes, in the Celtic regions, they continued to practice Samhain and Halloween next to each other, and they didn't see any issue with that. And finally, a lot of the modern Halloween practices are completely disconnected from the historical roots that they come from. And we can see this by the fact that we don't practice All Saints Day in America, really, unless you're Catholic. It's just like its own holiday. And trick-or-treating basically started because of a UNICEF trick-or-treating fundraiser. It has nothing to do with Samhain or anything else. And so let's stop all these myths. Let's get off the internet myths. Let's get off TikTok and Reels with all this stuff that like Halloween is pagan. It's just a day to spend with your family. You know, like I said, with my family, we sit in the driveway with a bonfire. We make s'mores. We hand candy out to people. There's nothing wrong with that. (laughs) And I'm not going to pretend like there is. And for all of you out there that are still adamant, like don't celebrate Halloween, please just, you know, let me know in the comments if there's something I missed. I'm, I'm willing to have a discussion with you, but please keep it charitable. Please try to be kind in the comments. I know this can be a very polarizing topic for some reason, but, uh, yeah, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Give it a like. If you did subscribe to the channel, if you're new and you want more content like this, this has been the epitome. I'm your host, Nathan Bozeman. We'll see you around.